Welcome to DOS Geek. Look at this beautiful laptop here. This is a 2016 Dell. Dude, I'm getting a Dell XPS, and I am in love with this laptop. Everything that I wanted from a high quality laptop, this Dell has. Now, there is a 2018 version of this, obviously, and there is a version, developer edition of the XPS, that comes with Linux installed by default Ubuntu. But right here, what you're seeing is MX17.1, absolutely beautiful Linux distribution using XFCE desktop, and I love it. And this Dell laptop's hardware really complements everything you could want from a laptop and with Linux or Windows. If you're a Windows user, I'm not going to hate. It's okay, but you should probably go to Linux. So some of the things I have to have on a laptop, I want an aluminum top and bottom. I want to feel that premium feel like you got in the old MacBooks, not the new ones where you've got dongle gate going on, but the 2012 2014, 16 MacBook, somewhere around there, right before dongle gate, whenever that was, that aluminum feel. And for a long time, I used a 2012 MacBook Pro because of that aluminum shell that just feels premium. I want it to be lightweight. And man, this thing is super lightweight. I want it to have ports. Imagine that, like, so I could plug stuff in. You get USB ports in this. Of course, you have your micro SD port. You also have the ability to use a USB-C port on this as well, which is just awesome. So you have that. You've got a headphone jack. Hey, Apple, look at that, a headphone jack. Uh, imagine that. And it's super thin. So the must-haves for a perfect laptop, durable material like aluminum frame, check. You can see the air vents there at the bottom of that, by the way, which is a beautiful place to put them. And they're slightly risen off of the top because of those nice rubber feet down there. Uh, has to be durable and lightweight. Beautiful screen. This is 1920 by 1080 screen with the infinity edge. That means the bezel is super small. And let me tell you something that makes a huge difference. I didn't think it would matter. Who cares the size of the bezel? I'm telling you the engagement and you see that little bezel on the side there, just super tiny is a huge deal. I want a big trackpad. I want a good keyboard that's backlit. This has all of that as well. Backlit keyboard, huge trackpad. The keys are nice and they give um, and give you good feedback on them. They're not too clicky or weak and the keyboard doesn't bend down as some of the cheap plastic uh, laptops out there will do. I love this thing. I absolutely love it. So you've got that minimum of eight gigabytes of RAM. This has got eight gigabytes of RAM and SSSD or NVMe. Two thumbs up. It's got both of those. Long battery life doesn't overheat when gaming. The MacBook, the air vents would generally come out that area between the screen and the keyboard. You would feel heat just pouring out. This laptop, not the case at all. In fact, I've had it on my lap doing coding and watching videos and things for, I would say at least an hour or more. Couldn't feel any additional heat dissipation that made it uncomfortable. I mean, there was more heat, obviously, the longer it runs, but nothing that would make you uncomfortable or have to move it or want to put something underneath it. The screen on this very tight hinges, which is really nice. It doesn't shake and wobble terribly. All of these things to me make the perfect laptop. And this laptop has them all. It's a 13 inch screen. It retailed for $1,499 when it was brand new, but this is a 2016 model. So you could pick this up. Mine was anywhere. Mine was around 500 bucks. You can get them anywhere from 500 to $700. Absolutely fantastic. For gamers, light gamers to medium gamers, developers, though, programming, school, light, medium graphic work, those type of things. I'm going to show you some of that here. Obviously, this is Sublime Text, just showing you IDE environments for programming, those type of things. Watching videos, of course, super easy, fast uh, website execution, watching high definition videos. Of course, it's 1920 by 1080 screen works beautifully. Somebody wrote into the show and asked, hey, I'm going to school. I want a good laptop to be able to do some light graphic work, you know, some video rendering, web development stuff. And this would be a perfect laptop for them, especially if you pick it up used and get that fantastic price. Or if you've got the cash flow and pick up one of those 2018 developer editions with Ubuntu installed on it by default. Also gonna show you some GIMP here because the MacBook Pro, even though it had eight gigabytes of RAM, it really slowed down with GIMP. It just could not handle GIMP. When you would try to add text 
or manipulate images, the slowdown was just incredible. Uh, or it would heat up excessively the longer that it ran. In this case, with this laptop, no issue there at all. Uh, even opening SFG files, which take a little longer, but very quick, able to manipulate the size of it. You don't have to wait a super long time for it to re-render on the screen. Uh, when you do, when we're doing the scaling here, absolutely works beautiful. So all of the things that I've thrown at this laptop, it works without a problem. That Infinity Edge is absolutely beautiful on the super bright screen. This video does not do it justice, but trust me, it's very bright and vibrant. Absolutely gorgeous. You get the Intel Core i5-6200U at 2.3 gigahertz times four. An Intel HD Graphics 520 Skylake GT2 embedded video GPU card in there. Very nice carbon fiber like material look around the keyboard there. Uh, so everything was just designed very well. And here's another kicker you're going to love. Battery life, four to six hours of heavy usage. And I mean, it actually gets that. It's it's amazing. Unlike, you know, laptops advertise four to six hours and you get like two. Or if you adjust the brightness down to about 70% you, and are doing light activities, you can get up to eight hours on this. And I'm telling you, it will actually achieve that. I could not believe how long this will run on battery and the performance while on battery is incredible. This Intel chip just does a fantastic job of keeping the performance are here. We're messing with rendering and Kden live actual videos, cutting, editing, adding effects. And you could see extraordinarily responsive, very fast. And it works this well, even gaming with the AC plug unplugged. So just running off battery. It does an incredible job. They really outdid themselves with this. It weighs around 2.7 pounds and very, very light, easy to slip into a laptop bag and get to work on it. Super small power brick as well. They thought of everything. So the power brick that plugs in is really tiny. And so again, very easy to shove into a bag unlike these gigantic colossal power supplies that come with other laptops out there. Out of every laptop I've owned, and I've owned a ton, this is one of my favorite laptops I've ever held in my hands. Now you're going to see some gaming here. So we're going to do ballistic overkill. And again, this is on medium settings. You're getting good enough graphic results here, frames per second. You can see in the upper left hand corner that you could game on this effectively. Now you're not, not going to have the best scores you ever had in your life, but effectively. So that's absolutely beautiful, fantastic. Around, you know, 39, 40 frames per second in there. It'll drop down. So kind of like a console gamer would be really used to probably, depending on unless, unless you have maybe the latest console. Sorry, I had to throw that out there, console gamers. No, but, uh, you know, it's decent. If you lower this down to low, then you're going to get somewhere, which I'll do here in a second, between 40 and 50 frames per second, which is perfectly good enough for gaming. You're not going to have the best gaming experience, but you know, it's good enough for this kind of laptop that's really not meant to be a gaming laptop. It can at least play some really decent first person shooters and you can have some fun with it. Additionally, I will show you CSGO after this. Uh, just lowered the settings down to low so you can see the character's hand kind of loses all of his details and things, but very good performance. By the way, Ballistic Overkill is an amazing game. And if you're part of the Destination Linux podcast that I'm a part of, you can join us in our Discord channel. And we play that sometimes and just hang out with us and play. And here we got some CSGO and it gets, you know, about the same results there, maybe slightly higher frames per second. CSGO is a lot more CPU uh, and uses a lot more CPU than it does GPU. So performance on anything that uh, ha has a very good CPU is going to be okay in CSGO. And you could see that here. Certainly playable, maybe not the 60 frames per second you get on your gaming machine, but for a 2016 Ultrabook light laptop that doesn't overheat, aluminum frame, beautiful infinity edge screen that just absolutely encapsulates you into the images with that tiny, tiny bezel. The webcam, by the way, had to be moved to the bottom, so that is one little weird quirk with it. It's on the bottom left-hand side, so you have to point the screen down a little bit in order for the webcam to really pick up your face fully, but it works. And I think it's a fair trade-off because I don't use the webcam as much as I do uh, watching, using content video and things on my laptop. And like I said, it works. It's not like it, it being in the top 
bottom corner there uh, has a tremendous impact on it. You could still do your your videos, uh, video conferences, Zoom, Skype, whatever you're using, and it would be fine there. And I think it's a 720p camera, something around those lines. So absolutely runs great. I've tested with Fedora and Mint. We obviously have done gaming here. My favorite laptop so far in my hands, and I've had a lot of them. Go check it out. 2016 Dell XPS. Fill your brains. That's crazy.